day two at CR Space 2022. Today we're focusing on unmanned systems. This is our new uh, vehicle, the Hugin Edge. So it's the smallest Hugin uh, autonomous underwater vehicle that we have uh, designed uh, so far. It is rated down to 1,000 meter and has an endurance of up to 24 hours. What are the new features in this uh, new UUV? So this vehicle will contain a brand new, highly advanced synthetic aperture sonar. Um, and it's actually, of its class, it's probably the smallest flooded AUV uh, with this kind of low drag shape uh, available uh, today. Why did you come up with uh, such an hydrodynamic shape? Well, the idea is to, uh, most of the vehicles this size, they are, uh, f they are um, uh, pressure cylinders, so like one cylindric shape, like a torpedo. Uh, but then since you have a lot of sensors, you always have a lot of protrusions from the cylinder. And that really affects the drag and the noise level from the vehicle. So the idea was to build a hydrodynamically efficient shape where we can have all the equipment uh, flush with the hull. So we have a very uh, smooth and hydrodynamically efficient uh, uh, hull, low drag, uh, low noise, long endurance. And last but not least, for uh, military applications, what are the missions? Well, for military applications, this is primarily designed for mine countermeasures. So it has synthetic after sonar, it has an optical camera, so this vehicle can do mine detection, classification and identification within the same vision. General Dynamics Mission Systems is showcasing its tailored unmanned aerial system solution. They can't talk on camera to us because they're currently in a U.S. Navy competition. But uh, the solution is uh, meant to fulfill several roles, such as uh, port security, so it's a tethered UAV. Uh, here it shows uh, in roles of uh, so naval base security or forward operation base security. It's not just for ISR, it can uh, act also as a communication relay. Uh, here you see our covert recon, so the tethered UAV is being deployed from a submarine. It can also be deployed from an unmanned surface vehicle. Uh, so it can probably be fitted with uh, a number of uh, different sensors, optical sensors, RF sensors, radio frequency, radio communications and so on. And the UAV partner of General Dynamics is uh, DPI UAV systems. This is the VBAT 128, our Group 3 platform with Group 4 capability. It's uh, our, the pride of the fleet right now. It's being integrated uh, with the artificial intelligence this year. So what does your AI brings to the VBAT? So Shield AI builds the world's best AI pilot. And really the way to think about that is the world's best AI for pilots. So whether it's uh, unmanned teammates or it's AI in the cockpit, we hyper-enable the operators with artificial intelligence. Have you demonstrated this already? We've demonstrated it on our, our Nova 2 platform that's currently fielded and has been fielded with, in combat since 2018. The VBAT is currently flying uh, right now and launching and landing off of ships and of course deployed in the field. And this year we'll integrate the artificial intelligence and demonstrate a flight of three in the fall. So what does it bring to the end user? It brings a couple of things. One is uh, the Group 4 capability. So think about uh, a company or a battalion size uh, or a battalion capability for a platoon. So now instead of one person controlling one VBAT, you can autonomously uh, use VBATs to do intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions um, without having to control them uh, using the autonomy to collect the information, create comms, uh, and provide battle space awareness. 
All right, great. Thank you very much. Sure, thank you. Behind me is the Sail Drone Explorer USV. Um, so it's part of our fleet of uncrewed surface vehicles that we use to collect uh, data. Um, that data can be MDA, ISR data, bathymetric data, or ocean data. Um, so we use a fleet of USVs to collect this and to support different mission sets. All right. Uh, have you been involved in any uh, Navy demonstrations recently? Yeah, so we supported Task Force 59 during IMX uh, 22. Uh, so we had a fleet of USVs supporting that exercise in the Arabian Gulf and Gulf of Aqaba. And how did that go? Um, I thought it was successful. It was great partnering with the US Navy, with Task Force 59, and the other um, companies that were involved in IMX. And uh, what uh, specifically did you demonstrate during this exercise? Uh, we demonstrated the uh, use of uncrewed surface vehicles for long duration missions to collect ISR, MDA data from our camera systems um, and machine learning systems on board the drones. Uh, sorry, MDA, what does it stand for? MDA stands for Maritime Domain Awareness. In addition, we're very excited that our founder, Richard Jenkins, has won the Mickelson Innovation Award by the Navy League here at Sierra Space. All right, Corey, what do we have here? We have a 54-inch unmanned underwater vehicle, which is a test platform for various payloads. What makes it unique compared to existing UUVs? So I would say the uniqueness is the modularity of the payload section can be conformed to various payloads under test, support uh, different voltages and interfaces, and it's also 54 inches, so there's not many of those out there in the world right now. So far, what have you tested? What kind of payloads? So this has just been completed as of February of this year. So right now, it has not seen water yet. So we're going to test in water in the next couple weeks. And uh, why is there a boxy shape central part? So that it was uh, specifically designed to test a, a fuel cell, which had that same shape. So it conforms to that shape to test that payload. And uh, you're here at CR Space, why? basically to demonstrate this, the capability of this 54-inch vehicle as a, as a test platform for various payloads. And so Penn State is a university. Uh, why are you working on UUVs? Do you work for like government customers? So we're basically a university-affiliated research center for the Navy. So they, they use us as a tr trusted agent basically for various technologies. So we support them in that capacity. And uh, last but not least, I see an ONR, Office of Naval Research uh, logo. Uh, are you working with them? Uh, we had worked with them in the past on this program specifically to develop this vehicle, but now it is our vehicle. We uh, basically completed it in-house under uh, our own money. So. All right. Very well. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you.